Today we're going to talk about the element line. So what is line? Um, usually it's just a stroke on a, on a 2D page or a series of points in geometry. Um, in general, a line is an area whose length is considered uh, greater than its width. Uh, in our 3D world, we also have branches, grasses, late afternoon shadows, icicles, telephone poles, jet trails, cables, fences, waterways, roads. These all appear as lines. 3D art may consist of lines. They may be on work or even implied in space. They can steer our eye or convey an emotional effect. These are subjective ideas, and they depend on the viewer's distance, awareness, and we may not be affected in the same way, all of us, as viewers. Nevertheless, they can be a very powerful and direct tool. So I wanted to show you some more images of art that was, is made of lines, consists of lines. So, I love Alexander Calder, so here are a number of his pieces. I think I showed you this before. It's part of his circus. This is kind of neat. I, I showed you this as well. Um, other cool thing about all art, but particularly these linear pieces, if you put them up next to a wall and have a bright light on them, then you get not only the, the real 3D piece, but you get a 2D image behind in the shadows, which is sort of a fun idea to play with. Whoops. Okay, more Calder. So he really, when I, when I look at these, I'm thinking about, you know, people who draw a lot, 2D artists, and how they just may use contour line to just kind of get the feel of the whole form very quickly. You know, you get a real sense of this, this person's posture, the way they walk, etc. Their whole attitude just by, you know, basically twisting around a couple of wires. Okay, we also have um, these little gardening shears. They're called secateurs. You know, there are, all tools don't have to just be, you know, just a metal blade or a metal thing with a, with a handle, like a plastic handle or something. A lot of tools were hand forged like these and are really beautiful pieces on their own, but very curvaceous, linear pieces. Um, this is a Thonet rocking chair. You guys have probably seen copies of this in places. It um, is from the Art Deco era. It's a beautiful piece, and just you're so enthralled by the spiraling lines of, of bent wood. And when it rocks, I mean, you get a, a, even a more sense of, of movement. This is a dance group called. Bolobolus. It's some kind of a fungus. But, you know, when we see dancers like this that, that do these kind of group um, composition things, I mean, we, we really start to feel that the bodies are, uh, are, are lines in themselves. They have a real linear quality. And when they get together, it's like a linear composition. Giacometti made these tall figures that we consider to be linear. This is Eero Saarinen, who, this is a maquette of his, 
oh, it's, gosh, it's called the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial or Gateway Arch. And it's huge. It's in um, Missouri. There's the architect himself. And here's what it looks like on the banks of, of um, the Missouri River in St. Louis. I guess it's the Missouri. It could be the Mississippi. Anyway, it's kind of an amazing arch. The other thing that is kind of interesting about it, I guess you can take an elevator up. I can't remember how tall this thing is, but you can take an elevator up to a certain point. Um, and I guess there, there must be some viewing areas, but it's huge. Let's see if I can find, let's see. Um, right, so it's 630 feet tall, and the base is so big that that, that elevator can take 40 people up to this um, viewing observatory area. I've shown you these before. These are the lines in Nazca, Peru, that were instead of piling up rocks in the spiral jetty, these they were taking rocks away and leaving the earth exposed. Here's lines on artwork. So in ceramics, this would be um, either carved away, probably carved away in this point. So the walls of this were very thick. They took a carving tool and carved back into the piece. So some lines are on the work. Also this one, it's called Adolescence. Uh, it's marble, um, but it's got all these wonderful, jaggedy kind of agitated lines of, of the, the grain in the marble, which kind of makes you think about the name of the piece, um, Adolescence, and maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. Sometimes line is made just by the contrast of, of shadows. This is actually stacked and laminated paper but the way the light hits it, it makes the edges there look like lines. There's also implied lines. We talked about this a little bit, directional lines. So there's a line coming up the leg of this. This is a Roman piece called the thorn puller. And then you also have the line of sight, this implied line of the thorn puller here, looking down at his foot where the thorn is. So there isn't really a line there, but we it's implied. And then you have this, which is actually a real line. So you've got this, this linear element over here on the side. Also, the arms become lines that all are directing into this one spot. This is a linear piece. It's called Cadillac Ranch. It's out on Highway 66. Um, the original one was built in 1974 by a group called the Art Farm. I don't think it looks, I've heard it doesn't look like this anymore. I guess there's graffiti all over the place and maybe more Cadillacs were, were um, dug in here. But anyway, you can see the whole idea it is not a line, except if you actually take that whole idea of geometry, a series of points. So this is a series of points that become a line. We see it as a line. Um, here's another implied a group of implied lines. You've got, well, Ugolino and his sons here. This is one very angst-filled family. Ugolino is looking out here. There's an implied line that's looking out away from the sculpture, maybe even at you, depending on where you're standing. You've got another implied line. Here's this older son looking up at dad here. You've got all these arms that are embracing, that are 
you know, following curves around that lead you up into important places, right? It's like, so like these arms are really almost everything is guiding you up to Ugolino's face, which is sort of the tone of the whole piece, the most important part, the, the emphasis of the piece. Okay, so this is Man Walking to the Sky by Jonathan Borofsky. Um, it's in Germany. And sometimes these lines there, again, lead us in a direction. They, they, they lead you to look out at a certain place. So what's this one doing? What, what happens at the end of this poll? Why is he walking up there? What conclusions do we draw about the direction or the meaning? Or maybe it's about our own fast-paced lives that we're zooming on without really seeing where we're going. Here's another directional or implied line um, by Nancy Holt. This is also about lines. Um, here again, we're looking through tubes like that piece I showed you in the previous lecture. You're looking through these big pipes, basically, um, and you're you're getting got like tunnel vision. In this case, this piece, like Stonehenge, has a lot to do with um, the the winter and summer solstices. So you've got these lines lining up in the cardinal directions, right? So this one through these pipes this direction through these pipes, through the east-west. And then the other cool thing is that there's perforations in these um, pipes so that light as it's going through the day can come shooting down. So you'll see these, these rays of light <clears throat> hitting the opposite side. So then we're going to go back to a couple of these. We're going to talk about the qualities of lines, you know, how we describe lines. So this one is a, we move extremely quickly over smooth lines. There, you know, there's nothing really in the way. Um, these implied lines, we read a little bit more slowly. You kind of have to take them in subliminally. Um, sometimes these jagged lines we go through even more slowly. Um, and I wanted to point out, so we've got these jagged lines that we look at a little bit more slowly. They're a little more complicated. In contrast to that, we've got a very sleek silhouette here. Um, so just a few contrasts within the piece. Um, this is... Anthony Gaudi's Casa Mila apartment building. And usually we think about apartment buildings as big, monolithic kind of um, rectangles. You know, it was a very modernist sort of concept. But here he made these so um, organic um, and very whimsical, these curved lines that um, really are very surprising to see. We also have vertical lines. This is Gaudí's, also in Barcelona, um, the Cathedral of the Sagrada Familia. And religious, particularly Christian buildings, often have these long spires that are supposed to kind of take us out of our, out of our earthly spaces and and make us think of something a little more spiritual. So you often have these really tall spires leading our eyes up to the heavens. Some lines are very, um, are very sturdy. The horizontal lines are usually seen as stable lines. That's the way we read them. Um, in this case, this is a building a house by Frank Lloyd Wright, um, it's called Falling Water, and it mimics 
the and you can see it so well here it mimics the the geology that's around it these these stratas of rocks and you use that again going up into these uh, vertical structures here the probably fireplaces this must be a stairwell in here but you still get the same sort of feeling of light and then the shadows under these ledges and he carries that on throughout this building it also horizontal lines you have to think about um, the horizon line of the earth i mean that's how we see landscape usually or that's how we lie in bed they're very stable and restful calming then we've got diagonal lines which usually make for a feeling of more drama or energy and in the this case these kind of i mean if, if you imagine this on a piece of paper you could see yourself you know really scratching these these lines on a piece of paper really quickly, kind of like a nervous energy. And it translates into this 3D piece. And then there's artists who want to do something really different, like this, this Japanese artist, Toshio. Um, weirdly, this is called the Pride of New England, probably the woods from New England. Anyway, he used a, a a group of lines, a series of lines, a bundle of different types of lines. You've got different thicknesses of lines. You've got horizontal ones. You've got vertical ones. You've got natural lines with natural wood here in two places. You've got another organic shape over here in the circle. That's also mimicked something you can't really see here. There's a little reflection pool um, but underneath here is a, um, a pile of rolled rocks. Um, really a hard thing to pull off, but I think he did a great job on this. Um, kind of these repeated organic shapes and forms with these manufactured wood areas. So then I just have some random pictures that I like. So here's back to Cadillac Ranch, sort of what they look like now after the ravages of, uh, you know, modern viewers. Here we've got some more implied line here with this, the ecstasy of St. Teresa with this angel here looking blissfully down on this ecstatic St. Teresa. Um, the angel also has an arrow pointing at her. You've got these gold elements, these, these rays coming down from the heavens. Um, so there again, another batch of different lines. I love how the angel is sort of, has this impish look, the smile on its face. And St. Teresa is like really out of it. She's so ecstatic. Um, Alexander Calder again. You guys have all seen mobiles before. Usually... Usually, at this day and age, unless you get to go to a, a Calder show, which I would if you ever have a chance, um, these mobiles that, that spin in the air um, just through any breezes that are going through. So this is just has infinite composition here. Um, I sort of thought these were corny until I went to a show, and they were so incredible to see how graceful they are and how huge they were and just how you really could stare at them forever even if you weren't a baby on your back in a cradle or a crib you know watching this thing as your parents are blowing it around ah boy here's another another we had ugolino and his sons and here we have laocoon and his sons and i don't really know the stories that go with these but this one has got another angsty guy here huge because i guess all dads are just the big figure here and the angst ridden sons who are having a few issues with this big snake big asp so um you know things like snakes i mean he the snake is a line so you've got this wonderful 
curving snake, you know, unifying the whole piece here, which is, you know, three distinct figures. Um, but what a trick to, to pull off, to have that be this unifying element. And you've got these um, implied lines. You've got his hand at one point went over here. And, you know, there again, everything kind of leading up to dad's really angst-ridden face. So, you know, these, these Romans really knew what they were doing. Um, this is Martin Perrier again, just pieces made of line. I kind of like these. They're sort of these big, dumb shapes, but there's something, there's something humorous about them. Um, I love the craftsmanship, um, but they seem to have some kind of hidden mystique. They're, 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 they're trying to say something, and I haven't really figured out what it is, but I do like them. Here's another one of his pieces. This one sort of looks like a shell, um, a shell form. But if you walked around here, this it would be like walking through a um, a portico or or under some trees midday, and the light would flicker and change, and all of these geometric shapes would change with with every step. So. A really fantastic piece to see. Anyway, now that you've seen these, I'm sure you will be looking for lines in and on and of and, and around um, artwork and hopefully make some of your own because you're going to be making your wonderful wire pieces, I hope. I hope you all try that one. Anyway, I'm checking out here and we'll see you later when we're talking about another element.